I just wanted to give an update. Uh, Joe and Dr. Howard both have a panel meeting, and I think Joe was uh, kind of prepping for the panel meeting this morning, so uh, I offered to step in. I just kind of wanted to give an update on what we're doing within the Child Home Safety Committee within K-SPAN. And uh, we've been very successful in this. And I want the first thing I want to say is that um, it's through our partners. It's now that didn't work. Uh, now how do I get back? Oh, there we are. How do I move forward? Probably the keyboard be the easiest. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Uh, we couldn't have done this without our partners. The initial partners were K SPAN and Kiprick. Uh, the panel was a big partner with this through the Justice Cabinet, and then Prevent Child Abuse of Kentucky, in addition to a lot of others who helped us distribute uh, and reach uh, our outreach, and distribution, and planning. Uh, our funding partner uh, is the Kentucky Agency for Substance Abuse Policy, the ASAP Board, and we've also picked up additional key partners who have been instrumental in the implementation of the project. Also, they've helped us with distribution. Uh, I'm proud to say in year two, we didn't spend any money on distribution. Uh, we found enough partners to help us get the boxes out across the state. Uh, and we went through most of the state. Uh, we had boxes delivered in Owensboro. We had them deliver in east, southeastern Kentucky. So it was through our partners that we were able to be successful. So in year two, we just we purchased and distributed um, three thousand four hundred and seventeen. And it's I'm not sure why we've got. Maybe it was the three, I may I probably wrong, 3,698 medication lock boxes that were distributed. And we distributed them in 91 counties. And we provided these resources to community partners, uh, such as the Family Resource Youth Service Centers, Family Counseling Centers, the HANDS Program, Department for Community Based Services, Community Action Coalitions. We also provided boxes to the Kentucky Office of Attorney General, also to the Safe Kids Coalitions, both in Fayette County and in Louisville. And then Purple Star Schools were provided medication lock boxes as well. We also had assistance from the regional prevention centers across the state, which helped us defray any costs for distribution. Uh, and the program was well received by all of our community partners and we did a survey and we, we found how they were using them and it was very useful to these organizations to be able to do one on one uh, education with their families as they were working with them. Uh, we received more requests than we could fulfill within the funding scope of the project. And we're delighted to announce that we've been awarded increased funding for fiscal year 2024 through the ASAP board. We're in the process of ordering 4,155 and with the additional 4,000 that Dr. Howard mentioned, so we'll have 8,000 medication lock devices that we can actually help distribute across the state of Kentucky. We're in the process of order, oh, I'm sorry, uh, that's over 500 more, actually now it's 4,500 more uh, boxes than we had last year. So uh, we'll be prior prioritizing requests from agencies with the capacity to provide face-to-face -face education to the parents receiving the resources. So we're not really wanting these to go out to health fairs particularly. We're really wanting it to go to organizations that work one-on-one -on -one with uh, families and can actually determine, determine where they feel like these boxes would be most utilized. And uh, Dr. Howard had already talked about this. This is something we send with the medication lock boxes. 
There again, we didn't try to go and reinvent the wheel. We tried to utilize resources that were already developed. These are great resources. There's no reason for us to try to, to imprint something ourselves when it's already developed. Uh, I like the fact that it also has the QR code so you can actually, the parent or the family can actually use that QR code to find additional resources. Along with this, is, and Dr. Howard had talked about that, is with ACES, uh, we also include the Connect brochure that's provided uh, through UK Healthcare. It was developed through UK Healthcare, Kiprick, and the Kentucky Youth Advocates, uh, KYA. And so with that, uh, we provide this with the medication lockboxes, and it's really just looking to help build family resilience uh, within that family. So, and address the ACEs. Because as, as Dr. Howard mentioned, we have ACEs, but we can combat it with resiliency. So if we can find ways to, to make a, a resilient environment for these kids, we can minimize the effects of those ACEs. And then lastly, but not least, is we have the home safety checklist. And uh, this is through Prevent Child Abuse of Kentucky. Again, we didn't try to create any new, new documents. Uh, we just really utilized what was already out there. Um, the nice thing about this is that two of the main topics are medication safety and firearm safety, but it goes much further than that. It also talks about swimming pool and water safety, uh, water toy safety, trampoline safety, fireplace stove and fire pit safety, lawnmower and ATV safety, and then also pets and animal safety. So it, it is a little more uh, comprehensive, uh, but it gets a message across on medication safety, but then provides other resources for the family. Okay. Where do you fit in? Uh, let us know about other efforts or resources in your community. Uh, you can be added to the list of, for any new resources. You can go to child home safety at ky.gov. If you're wanting to receive any of these uh, medication lock boxes, your organization. Again, we're not trying to do this to send these out to individuals. We're wanting to send them out to organizations that are working with those individuals. Uh, feel free to share this information with others and to join our child home safety committee. One of the things that we're also looking for is if you have resource, know of resources for gun locks, we would like to add that on to this for uh, firearm safety. Uh, again, we're not trying to get into the political debate about people with firearms. All we're trying to say is store your firearms safely if you have, especially if you have small children in the household. So uh, I think with the suicide rate that you talked about, you may want to think about it even for older children. So. Um, with that, any questions? <laughs>